Hey, I'm Corwin, and today I'm back where it all began. So I'm currently standing in my grandfather's shop. They moved into this house 30-ish uh, years ago, and he had this built on the property and put here um, so that he could work on, you know, everything he wants to work on, uh, not in the garage anymore. So something we can all aspire to, and I mean, he made it. He was living the dream out here. So I'm gonna go around and kind of look at all the projects and how he had the shop set up and uh, just kind of archive some of this stuff and hopefully you find some of it interesting too. So first thing you may notice is that it's kind of a huge mess in here. <laughs> so obviously like anybody's shop, it just kind of stays a mess. Um, as much as you try to keep it clean, you know, there's just so much you can do. Um, but you'll notice um, some of the stuff has already left. All of his welding equipment was over here in the corner along with the big air compressor. Um, he had this garage door put in, so theoretically you could drive a car and park it in here. At the time, he had a 70, mid-70s Stingray, like a red Corvette. It was really, it was kind of nice, uh, but you know, those are kind of dog in general. So you'll notice a couple of motorcycles, uh, tools, tools along the back, and then we kind of get over, get over into the corner with all the miscellaneous crap. Um, and then of course, he had the radio, all the books you could ever need on any car he's ever had, uh, the stove, at one point he was getting into some powder coating which was kind of cool, and then just more more storage over there. There's also a full the attic, um, I need to get up there and look and see what all's up there. It's all stuff he took off of cars, some of it may be valuable, some of it may not, um, hard to say, and then lastly you're currently sitting on top of the workbench. So yeah, let me show you Let me show you some of this stuff because it's kind of cool. So right off the bat, I'm sure the first thing you noticed was this Triumph. It's a late 60s, early 70s. I'm not super uh, up on the different model designations of Triumph motorcycles, but it is uh, the one you want. It's the Tiger 750. He bought it and had it shipped over uh, a couple years ago. Went through the whole thing and kind of fixed it up. You can see it's been sitting a while and the last I mean, it ran. We started it a couple of times, but the last thing that he was, he needed a longer throttle cable. The gas in it is probably bad. Yeah, well, there's no gas in it at all, so that'll do it. But it would probably start right now if I tried. But he painted the tank, kind of did some work on the motor, painted up the motor and the fenders, so. This thing's ready to go. It's probably the most valuable thing in here at the moment, so. Unfortunately, we never got to ride it. In fact, the chain is sitting here on the floor, so hopefully it'll go to a good home and somebody will take care of it, not chop it up and turn it into a bobber. Although, Triumph bobbers are pretty sick. <laughs> this other guy right here is a mid-80s Suzuki 850. Uh, GS, I think is the Suzuki designation. Um, and he just, <laughs> It was, it was a good attempt, I'll give him that, um, at kind of bobbing, uh, you know, a vintage 80s bike, plenty of people do it. And it's a good one to start with. It's kind of cool, he went through all the electronics, I don't even know, uh, I don't even know what all he did to this thing, but I know it never ran right. And he tried to put a mono shock on it, and he could never get the geometry to work with the mono shock, so it would just bottom out every time. Uh, there's some gas shocks sitting over in the corner that he tried and it, it none of them worked i don't know i don't know why it seemed like it should but who knows he also look at this cool uh intake manifold he built and just put a harley carburetor on the end of it <laughs> i mean you, you if you have any familiarity with these uh japanese four cylinders like as soon as you start doing any work on the carburetors, like it, it gets tough, you know, they're, they're so finicky and you have to sync them all up. The guys that do it, I mean, uh, more power to them. It's got, takes more patience than I have, but uh, this was his solution to uh, avoid that. I'm sure it ran lean, but it worked, uh, you know, he ran it, so kind of cool. It looks like he went ahead and put the old shocks back on uh, and then just kind of left it. Nothing ever really happened with this bike. I don't know if anyone would even want to buy it. I can't even tell. There's a lot of wiring here that I don't know what it does. So it's kind of a tear down and start over and I don't know where any of the parts are. So it would, it, it's a, it's got a good motor, but it's going to need someone who uh, wants to put in that kind of effort. 
This is the problem. Like at one point in time, he and I went through all this stuff. Like it looks like this. That's a battery box. I bet you this stuff goes to the Suzuki. This stuff, I have no. This looks like more car parts. Some Suzuki parts over here too. I don't know what those pipes go to, but that's a chain guard. <sighs> a pair of skivvies. There's the carburetors that came off of that bike. So, I mean, they don't look in too bad a shape. These could be worth some money actually. My Coonies too, so not the crappy Hitachis they started putting on. This bad boy is one uh, I might try to take with me. We rebuilt this 425 for the Chupacabra, which I'll get to in a little bit. So it's been bored 20 over uh, and we went through it, rebuilt it, painted it up. We never ran it, which sucks. And in fact, <laughs> we broke one of the rings when we were installing them. And so we just went down to O'Reilly's and bought one for a 454 and ground it down till it would fit. So uh, <laughs> if, uh, if I ever was gonna run it, um, I would definitely want to swap that ring back out before I do it because Lord knows it's not gapped how it should be so but other than that it's ready to go uh, I'm not super familiar with Oldsmobile motors but I mean it puts out like 400 horsepower so it could go in something it's a big block too this this boy is it's a big boy well, I'd like to take this guy with me and see if I can't get it in something eventually I'd hate to see it leave especially since we never got to hear it run. This is kind of the problem. There's just a turbo 350 sitting here on the floor. I don't see, it's got a C4 stamp on it, but I don't, I'm not, I don't know enough about it to know what this came out of or <laughs> what it should go back in, but I'm assuming it's good. I mean, there's not a bunch of fluid all over the floor, so who knows. Right here next to all these fishing poles and uh, signed, at least it was signed, Bob Lilly picture. So this, this is where we start to get into the chaos. All this is paint and more paint, which is different from the paint over there. Not really sure about that. Pipes, I, I don't even know what some of this stuff is. And then this shelf is like carburetor parts, relays, that says small block Chevy fuel pump, new. So I don't know about that. Bolts and brass fitting. You can see this shelf's being held up by a piece of wood. So this is stuff I don't even know. A couple of hand planes on here that are kind of nice actually. Anyway, who knows? I need to go through all this stuff and see. Oh, look at this. AC kit. This might really come in handy with the Cadillac actually. Except it looks like fitting came off the cold. Okay, well, I guess I'll put that back. I'm sure everybody has one of these, too. If you ever need a bolt, this is where you get it. <laughs> Have fun digging. This is actually pretty cool. Look at this. Loaded with old school. Bruce Willis just loaded up with original stuff. He might want to take this with him, actually. But there's... A lot of old country. Look at this. This is real. This is real. My goodness. It's not even... It might be a little warped, but it's not bad. So moving over here, this may give you some indication of his uh, variety. I'm not really sure what you call it. I don't, some of this may be worth some money, some of it may not. There's the book for the Corvette, the motorcycle. This may be worth something, the old Honda book. And then look at this. 55 through 74 Chevrolet tune-up and repair guide. Yeah, good luck. Dodge and Plymouth vans. <laughs> and then late model BOP. Okay, nobody cares about those, I'm sure. Look at this. Okay, so Harley. Recipe and cooking tips. 58 Oldsmobile service policy. 67 Oldsmobile owner's manual. And a 72 Buick Skylark GS sports wagon owner. Oh my God. 
Look at that, 65 Bonneville. That's what he had, that's what he had before the Cadillac. And it burned, which is why there are a plethora of fire extinguishers everywhere. Look at this, a Holly carburetor manual. I mean, we have the internet now, but uh, back in the day, geez. I bet this was something. Look at this bad boy. He put this in to do all of this uh, powder coating. That's what's in this box down here too. All the stuff to do that. Those are the airbags I was telling you about that he tried to use on the Suzuki. Uh, that one too, actually. Oh shit, look at this. So it broke my finger. I wonder what's in that. Over service, anybody? Not what I expected. Okay, this might actually be worth a little something. Look at this. He had a Judge 1970 GTO with all the stripes and period correct stuff. I don't know. I'm gonna have to go home and look this up. Look what I just found. It's all the badges he took off the Cadillac. Oh man, oh man. I gotta, I gotta take these with me. I don't even know. Why did he, oh the sea, the sea! Oh God. Uh, I hope, I hope this was an extra plug. <laughs> Pretty sure this, uh, this was the carburetor he was gonna put on. I mean, this is a nice carburetor too. Um, it looks like he went through it. I mean, it's clean, so. Electric choke? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was gonna go on the, the car out, out front. Okay, so real quick, uh, this pole right here holds up the middle of the roof. It saved my life. When he had his Sportster, look, there's a picture of it, hold on. Well, there was a picture of it, but I found this. Look at that, there's the GTO. He must have rebuilt that motor and stuck it back in. That was in the, I don't know why there's a Polaroid of it though. It was in the 90s. <laughs> Strange. Anyway, I was like eight or nine and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go help Bobby out in the shop. It's the least I could do. Let me wash your motorcycle. Well, I don't know what I did, but that thing started, almost fell on me. And this pole stopped the motorcycle from absolutely crushing me into oblivion, so. I'm very thankful, or else I would not be here today to talk about it. So just a couple of things out here at the front of the shop. Obviously one of them is this motorcycle. This is like an 83 750 Honda. This is actually worth some money. You know, a lot of people really get into these bikes. This one's in pretty good condition, so it'll go for some cash. He didn't really do anything to it. I think he put the guards on the front and uh, that's it. It's good to go. It'll probably fire right up. All right, and then here we go. Look at all the cats that have been on this thing. Oh my God. Okay, there it is. Everything's pretty much back on. Uh, you can just see all the accessories are mostly off the front except for the power steering. Whose basketball is that? All of this AC stuff, I mean, these cars, there's the compressor. It's just chaos in here and who knows if, if everything's here and how it all goes back together. But it was running. Jeez, this thing. Oh my God. Ah, look at this beast. Blue on blue on blue. These Jubilees are going for some pretty, pretty good chunks of a change now. Just clean it up and I wonder if it's open. Oh, it is. Look at this interior. Oh man. Oh yeah, I wish you could smell it. Smells like old car in here. Okay, look at this. Not this board, don't look at this board. This is the Chupacabra. This was our hot rod project that we started and never finished that that 455 was supposed to go in. You'll notice the frame is uh, custom. Back here, this is a Jeep 3.5. Rear end, it's like something came loose though because it was, it rolled at one point in time. Uh, so the rear end came out of a Jeep. 
mag wheels those are good wheels we made this frame and then the front end came off of a kia sorrento i don't even know some suv kia that we just like grafted grafted in <laughs> it actually turned out okay it's been sitting out here rusting obviously but and then we at one point in time we had that motor sitting in here it just kind of you know i started college and we just ran out of time but we had it all set up to set a mazda b-series truck body right here i mean it was going to be really cool i wish i wish we'd have finished this just to, just to hear it run, if nothing else. So it's probably a lot of BSing about stuff most of you don't care about, but I don't know. There's a lot of sentimental value in this stuff. It's the, it's the smell of it. It's the grit of it. Everything's just got an age to it that uh, it makes you feel a little nostalgic, you know? And this may here pretty soon, you know? It's the last time I'll ever get to be in here. And so we had a lot of really good memories in this place. Uh, it served us extremely well throughout the years and so you know I appreciate you if you made it this far throughout the video I, you know I appreciate you coming along and kind of sharing in some of that with me a lot of cars a lot of motorcycles came through this shop a lot of blood a lot of sweat and a lot of tears and uh, you know as cliche as that sounds it's, it's it's the damn truth you know like you can't you can't replicate something like this um, it's just got its own flavor to it, you know, and nothing will ever... Th things may come close, but nothing will ever be like this again for me, you know, in my life. So I wanted to make sure I captured as much of it as I could. And I'm going to try to take, you know, certain pieces with me just in, in memory. So I don't know. Hopefully I provided some sort of entertainment value to somebody. If not, my son will watch this in the future and go, okay, yeah, I get it. I understand what you're saying now, so... That's the shop. I need to go in the attic, but there's no lights up there and I might fall through the roof. So until next time, 